Saint Ignatius of Loyola, Basque, Ignacio Loyolacoa, Spanish, Ignacio de Loyola, Latin, Ignatius de Loyola, c. the 23rd of October 1491 to the 31st of July 1556, was a Spanish Basque Catholic priest and theologian who founded the religious order called the Society of Jesus, Jesuits, and became its first superior general at Paris in 1541. The Jesuit order served the Pope as missionaries, and they were bound by a vow of special obedience to the sovereign pontiff in regard to the missions. They therefore emerged as an important force during the time of the Counter Reformation. Ignatius is remembered as a talented spiritual director. He recorded his method in a celebrated treatise called The Spiritual Exercises, a simple set of meditations, prayers, and other mental exercises, first published in 1548. Ignatius was beatified in 1609, and then canonized, receiving the title of saint on 12 March 1622. His feast day is celebrated on 31 July. He is the patron saint of the Basque provinces of Gipicoa and Biscay as well as the Society of Jesus, and was declared patron saint of all spiritual retreats by Pope Pius XI in 1922. Ignatius is also a foremost patron saint of soldiers. Early life Inigo López de Loyola sometimes erroneously called Inigo López de Ricalde was born in the municipality of Azpatia at the castle of Loyola in today's Gipicoa, Basque Country, Spain. He was baptized Inigo, after Saint Inecus Inicus Basque, Aneco, Spanish, Inigo Abbot of Anya, a Basque medieval, affectionate name meaning, my little one. It is not clear when he began using the Latin name, Ignatius, instead of his baptismal name, Inigo. It seems he did not intend to change his name, but rather adopted a name which he believed was a simple variant of his own, for use in France and Italy where it was better understood. Inigo was the youngest of thirteen children. His mother died soon after his birth, and he was then brought up by Maria de Guerin, the local blacksmith's wife. Inigo adopted the surname, De Loyola in reference to the Basque village of Loyola where he was born. <inaudible> <inaudible> Military career As a boy Íñigo became a page in the service of a relative, Juan Velázquez de Quiller, treasurer mayor of the Kingdom of Castile. As a young man Íñigo had a great love for military exercises as well as a tremendous desire for fame. He framed his life around the stories of El Cid, the Knights of Camelot, and the Song of Roland. He joined the army at seventeen, and according to one biographer, he strutted about, with his cape slinging open to reveal his tight-fitting hose and boots, a sword and dagger at his waist. According to another he was, a fancy dresser, an expert dancer, a womanizer, sensitive to insult, and a rough punkish swordsman who used his privileged status to escape prosecution for violent crimes committed with his priest brother at carnival time. Upon encountering a Moor who denied the divinity of Jesus, he challenged him to a duel to the death, and ran him through with his sword. He dueled many other men as well. In 1509, at the age of 18, Inigo took up arms for Antonio Manrique de Lara, second Duke of Magera. His diplomacy and leadership qualities earned him the title, Servant of the Court, which made him very useful to the Duke. Under the Duke's leadership, Inigo participated in many battles without injury. But at the Battle of Pamplona in 1521 he was gravely injured when a French Navarrese expedition force stormed the fortress of Pamplona on May 20, 1521. A cannonball hit him in the legs, wounding his right leg and fracturing the left in multiple places. Inigo was returned to his father's castle in Loyola, where, in an era that knew nothing of anesthetics, he underwent several surgical operations to repair his legs, having the bones set and then rebroken. In the end these operations left one leg shorter than the other, Inigo would limp for the rest of his life, and his military career was over. <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious conversion and visions While recovering from surgery, Inigo underwent a spiritual conversion which led to his experiencing a call to religious life. Hospitals in those days were run by religious orders, and the reading material available to bedridden patient tended to be selected from scripture or devotional literature. This is how Inigo came to read a series of religious texts on the life of Jesus and on the lives of the saints, since the "'Romances of Chivalry' 
he loved to read were not available to him in the castle. The religious work which most particularly struck him was the De Vita Christi of Ludolf of Saxony. This book would influence his whole life, inspiring him to devote himself to God and follow the example of Francis of Assisi and other great monks. It also inspired his method of meditation, since Ludolf proposes that the reader place himself mentally at the scene of the gospel story, visualizing the crib at the nativity, etc. This type of meditation, known as simple contemplation, was the basis for the method that Saint Ignatius would promote in his spiritual exercises. Aside from dreaming about imitating the saints in his readings, Inigo was still wandering off in his mind about what he would do in service to his king and in honor of the royal lady he was in love with. Cautiously he came to realize the after-effect of both kinds of his dreams. He experienced a desolation and dissatisfaction when the romantic heroism dream was over, but, the saintly dream ended with much joy and peace. It was the first time he learned about discernment. After he had recovered sufficiently to walk again, Inigo resolved to begin a pilgrimage to the Holy Land to kiss the earth where our Lord had walked, and to do stricter penances. He thought that his plan was confirmed by a vision of the Virgin Mary and the infant Jesus he experienced one night, which resulted in much consolation to him. In March 1522, he visited the Benedictine monastery of Santa Maria de Montserrat. There, he carefully examined his past sins, confessed, gave his fine clothes to the poor he met, wore a garment of sack cloth, then hung his sword and dagger at the Virgin's altar during an overnight vigil at the shrine. From Montserrat he walked on to the nearby town of Manresa, Catalonia, where he lived for about a year, begging for his keep, and then eventually doing chores at a local hospital in exchange for food and lodging. For several months he spent much of his time praying in a cave nearby where he practiced rigorous asceticism, praying for seven hours a day, and formulating the fundamentals of his spiritual exercises. Inigo also experienced a series of visions in full daylight while at the hospital. These repetitive visions appeared as a form in the air near him and this form gave him much consolation because it was exceedingly beautiful. It somehow seemed to have the shape of a serpent and had many things that shone like eyes, but were not eyes. He received much delight and consolation from gazing upon this object. But when the object vanished he became disconsolate. He came to interpret this vision as diabolical in nature. <laughs> Period of study In September 1523, Inigo made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land with the goal of settling there. He remained there from September 3 to 23 but he was sent back to Europe by the Franciscans. He returned to Barcelona and at the age of 33 began to attend a free public grammar school to prepare himself for entrance to a university. When his preparation was complete, he then went on to the University of Alcala, where he studied theology and Latin from 1524 to 1534. There he encountered some women who had been called before the Inquisition. These women were considered alumbrados illuminated, illuminati, or enlightened ones a group that was linked in their zeal and spirituality to Franciscan reforms, but had incurred mounting suspicion on the part of the administrators of the Inquisition. At one point, Inigo was preaching on the street when three of these devout women began to experience ecstatic states. One fell senseless, another sometimes rolled about on the ground, another had been seen in the grip of convulsions or shuddering and sweating in anguish. This suspicious activity had taken place while Inigo was preaching without a degree in theology. Inigo was then singled out for interrogation by the Inquisition, however, he was later released. After these adventurous activities, Inigo by now Ignatius moved to Paris to study at the famous university. He studied at the ascetic College de Montaigu, where he remained for over seven years. He arrived during a period of anti-Protestant turmoil which forced John Calvin to flee France. Very soon after his arrival Ignatius had gathered around him six key companions, all of whom he had met as fellow students at the university. Francis Xavier, Alfonso Salmeron, Diego Lainez, and Nicolas Bobadilla, all Spanish, Peter Faber, a Savoyard, and Simão Rodríguez of Portugal, Peter Faber, a young man from Savoy in the south of France, and Francis Xavier, a nobleman from the eastern end of the Basque country, were his first roommates, and would become his closest associates in founding the Jesuit order. 
On the morning of 15 August, 1534, in the chapel of Church of St. Peter, at Montmartre, Loyola and his six companions, of whom only one was a priest, met and took upon themselves the solemn vows of their lifelong work. Later, they were joined by St. Francis Borgia, a member of the House of Borgia, who was the main aide of Emperor Charles V, and other nobles. Ignatius obtained a master's degree from the University of Paris at the age of 43. In later life he was often called Master Ignatius because of this. Topic: <inaudible> Foundation of the Jesuit Order. In 1539, with Saint Peter Faber and Saint Francis Xavier, Ignatius formed the Society of Jesus, which was approved in 1540 by Pope Paul III. Ignatius was chosen as the first superior general of the order and invested with the title of Father General by the Jesuits. Ignatius sent his companions as missionaries around Europe to create schools, colleges, and seminaries. Juan de Vega, the ambassador of Charles V at Rome, met Ignatius there. Esteeming Ignatius and the Jesuits, when Vega was appointed Viceroy of Sicily, he brought Jesuits with him. A Jesuit college was opened at Messina, which proved a success, and its rules and methods were afterwards copied in other colleges. In 1548, Ignatius was briefly brought before the Roman Inquisition for examination of his book of spiritual exercises. But he was released, and the book was finally given papal permission to be printed. It was published in a format such that the exercises were designed to be carried out over a period of 28 to 30 days. Ignatius, along with the help of his personal secretary Juan Alfonso de Polanco, wrote the Jesuit Constitutions, adopted in 1553. It created a centralized organization for the order, and stressed absolute self denial and obedience to the Pope and to superiors in the Church hierarchy, using the motto Perinde AC Cadaver, as if a dead body i.e. that the good Jesuit should be as well disciplined as a corpse. But his main principle became the Jesuit motto, ad maiorum dei glorium, for the greater glory of God. During the years 1553-1555, Ignatius dictated his autobiography to his secretary, Father Goncalves da Camara. This autobiography, Autobiographia de San Ignacio de Loyola, in Wikisource in Spanish is a valuable key for understanding his spiritual exercises. It was kept in the archives of the Jesuit order for about 150 years, until the Ballandists published the text in Acta Sanctorum. <laughs> <laughs> Death and canonization Ignatius died in Rome on 31 July 1556, as a result of the Roman fever, a severe case of malaria that recurred in Rome, Italy, at different points in history. An autopsy revealed that he also had several kidney and bladder stones, a probable cause of the abdominal pains he suffered from later in life. At this time he was placed in a wooden shrine, his body was then covered with his priestly garments. On 1 August the shrine was then buried in the small Maria della Strada church. In 1568 that church was pulled down and replaced with the Church of the Jesu. Saint Ignatius was put into a new coffin and re-entered in the new church. Ignatius was beatified by Pope Paul V on 27 July 1609, and canonized by Pope Gregory XV on 12 March 1622. His feast day is celebrated annually on 31 July, the day he died. Saint Ignatius is venerated as the patron saint of Catholic soldiers, the military ordinariate of the Philippines, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Baltimore, the Basque Country, and various towns and cities in his native region. <laughs> Legacy Ignatius has to this day a powerful and respectable legacy. Of the institutions dedicated to St. Ignatius, one of the most famous is the Basilica of St. Ignatius Loyola, built next to the house where he was born in Aspatia, the Basque country, Spain. The house itself, now a museum, is incorporated into the basilica complex. In addition, he has had a global impact, having been the influence behind numerous Jesuit schools and educational institutions worldwide. In 1671, the mission at St. Ignace, Michigan was named in his honor, by Father Jacques Marquette. The present-day St. Ignace still bears his name. 
In 1949 he was the subject of a Spanish biographical film The Captain from Loyola in which he was played by Rafael Duran. In 2016, he was the subject of a Filipino film Ignacio de Loyola in which he was played by Andreas Munoz. <laughs> Genealogy Since 1949 The shield of Añas Loyola is a symbol of St. Ignatius' family's Añas lineage, and is used by many Jesuit institutions around the world. As the official colors of the Loyola family are maroon and gold, the Añas shield consists of seven maroon bars going diagonally from the upper left to the lower right on a gold field. The bands were granted by the King of Spain to each of the Añas brothers, in recognition of their bravery in battle. The Loyola shield features a pair of rampant gray wolves flanking each side of a cooking pot. The wolf was a symbol of nobility, while the entire design represented the family's generosity towards their military followers. According to legend, wolves had enough to feast on after the soldiers had eaten. Both shields were combined as a result of the intermarriage of the two families in 1261. Topic lineage Villaslada established the following detailed genealogy of St. Ignatius. Topic gallery Topic Bibliography The Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius, Tan Books, 2010. ISBN 978 0 153 5 Ignatius of Loyola, Spiritual Exercises, London, 2012. Lamovia.net ISBN 978-1-78336-012-3 Loyola, Street Ignatius The Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius. Anthony Matola. Garden City, Doubleday. ISBN 978-0-385-02436-5. Loyola, Street Ignatius Joseph O'Connor, ed. The Autobiography of St. Ignatius. New York, Benziger Brothers. OCLC 1360267. For information on the O'Connor and other translations, see Notes in A Pilgrim's Journey, The Autobiography of Ignatius of Loyola page 11-12. Loyola, Street Ignatius John Olin, ed. The Autobiography of St. Ignatius Loyola, with related documents. New York, Fordham University Press. ISBN 0-8232-1480-X. Topic see also List of Catholic Saints List of Jesuits Marie Madeleine de Hoot Foundress of the Sisters, Faithful Companions of Jesus Martin Ignacio de Loyola The Cave of Saint Ignatius, a sanctuary built where Ignatius of Loyola reflected for eleven months in a grotto, in Manresa. Isabella Roser and Isabel de Josa, wealthy Catalan women who were Loyola's benefactors from the 1520s onwards. Topic references topic Further reading Bartoli, Daniello 1855. History of the Life and Institute of St. Ignatius de Loyola, Founder of the Society of Jesus. New York, Edward Dunnigan and Brother. Caraman, Philip 1990. Ignatius Loyola, A Biography of the Founder of the Jesuits. San Francisco, Harper and Row. ISBN 0-06-250130-5. August Derleth, St. Ignatius and the Company of Jesus, Vision Books, 1956. LCCN 56-7278 Foss, Michael The Founding of the Jesuits, 1540. Turning Points in History Series. London, Hamilton. ISBN 0-241-01513-8. Garcia Villaslada, Ricardo 1986. San Ignacio de Loyola, Nueva Biografía in Spanish. La Editorial Católica. ISBN 84-220-1267-7. Meissner, William Ignatius of Loyola, The Psychology of a Saint. New Haven, Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-06079-3. O'Malley, John W. The First Jesuits. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-30312-1. Life of St. Ignatius of Loyola, Tan Books, 1997. ISBN 978-0-89555-345-4. St. Ignatius of Loyola, Tan Books, 2008. ISBN 978-0-89555-624-0. 
Topic external links Works by Ignatius of Loyola at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Ignatius of Loyola at Internet Archive Works by Ignatius of Loyola at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks. Street. Ignatius of Loyola, Confessor, Butler's Lives of the Saints The Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius Translation by Elder Mullen, S.J. Letters of St. Ignatius of Loyola Contemplation to Attain Love, by Ignatius of Loyola Founder Statue in St. Peter's Basilica Colonnade Statue St. Peter's Square The Book of Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit monastic order in Arabic, dating from 1773.